Hello all, and welcome to Draw My Calculus. Today, we're going to talk about the 2010 AP Calculus AB FRQ question number two. Before we get started on talking about how to solve this problem, I first want to mention a couple of things that you should know beforehand. Problem number two is actually on the calculator section, so I'll be going over how to solve the problems with the calculator so that you all can make your lives easier when taking the test. In addition, when you practice this problem, keep solving it until you're certain you can get this down in about 15 minutes. You won't want to spend too much time solving just this one problem as there are many others that need to be solved. So keep practicing until you understand the concept well enough so that you can recognize it on the actual test. Without further ado, let's move on to the problem. Let's go ahead and read the question real quickly. A zoo sponsored a one-day contest to name a new baby elephant. Zoo visitors deposited entries in a special box between noon and 8 p.m. The number of entries in the box t hours after noon is modeled by a differentiable function e. Values of e of t and hundreds of entries at various times t are shown in the table above. Let's look at our questions. Part A says, use the data in the table to approximate the rate in hundreds of entries per hour at which entries were being deposited at time t equals 6. Show the computations that lead to your answer. So let's go ahead and pull out the key parts of this problem. This first part tells us that we need to use the data in the table, meaning don't go pulling random values out of thin air, because what we need is going to be right in front of us. Next, we need to find out the rate at which entries were being deposited at time equals 6, in other words, how fast entries are deposited at that specific time. Finally, that last part is just saying show your work, and I can't stress how important that is if you want to get all the points for this FRQ. Let's think about what we need to do to solve this problem. When we look at the data table, we may think this is pretty bad looking, you may be more used to finding the rate using the derivative of a formula and then solving for that rate. However, in this case, all we have is a data table that doesn't even have t equals 6. But let's think for a moment. Let's recall that to find the rate or slope of the tangent line at a certain time, we typically use the formula f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. You might also know this as y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. And this is exactly the formula that we're going to use to find this rate. Now, we have to find values close enough to plug 6 into the, in this formula. And lo and behold, we have a 5 and a 7. These are useful because the average of the two numbers is actually 6, meaning that the approximation of the rate found using these numbers should be close to the actual rate of when t equals 6. Let's go ahead and plug these into our equation to find our rate when t equals 6. We get that our rate at t equals 6 is 4. Notice how this is an approximation since we can't be certain that this is the exact rate since we had to approximate using values close to 6. But be sure not to forget units in your answer or what kind of units we're dealing with. Remember that we're dealing with hundreds of entries, so our answer should actually be 400 entries per hour. In case you're wondering how the calculator can be used to speed this problem up, you can simply just punch in the numbers and get the answer. It's honestly not that much quicker than computing the value yourself, but it is handy to keep a backup just in case you make a simple arithmetic error. Part B says, use a trapezoidal sum with the four subintervals given by the table to approximate the value of 1 eighth times the integral from 0 to 8 e of t. Using correct units, explain the meaning of 1 eighth times the integral of 0 to 8 e of t dt in terms of the number of entries. So basically, we need to use a trapezoidal sum. And in order to do this, we need to understand that trapezoids have a formula that can be used to calculate their area, which is base 1 plus base 2 times height divided by 2. In order to answer this first part of the question, let's first graph our data values that are in the table we saw earlier. So right now, what we just did is we just plotted a whole bunch of different points, and the question wants us to make trapezoids out of them. And we actually know how many trapezoids we want to use because this question explicitly states that we want four subintervals. So we divide up our graph into four trapezoids, which actually works out pretty nicely. Uh, now we just need to find the area of each trapezoid and add them all up to get our integral because the integral is essentially our area under the curve. Remember that this is also an approximation because our value may not match what is actually underneath the curve. To find the area, we use our formula, and in this case, the difference between the x values is our height, and the height of each x value is going to be a base. A little confusing, but if you turn the graph sideways, you may be able to understand a little bit better. The calculator can actually be used here to plug in all the values into the formula, which will save time for sure. However, the values are simple enough that you can compute them by hand as well. Finally, after 
we've added all of these, we're done. Or are we? We have to look at our question again. And in case you missed it earlier, there's a sneaky 1 8 that's lying in front of our integral. That means we have to divide by 8 in order to solve this integral. We get that our answer is 10.687 or 10.688. Now to answer the second part of the question, we have to figure out what this means. Well, earlier, we discussed how the integral is the area underneath the curve, which is the total number. But what does that 1 8 in the front do? Well, the difference between the endpoints um, 8 to 0 is 8, isn't it? And if we're dividing that number by the total, aren't we taking the average? That means this integral is actually the average number of hundreds of entries in the box between noon and 8 p.m. Part C says, at 8 p.m., volunteers began to process the entries. They processed the entries at a rate modeled by the function p, where p of t equals t cubed minus 30 times t squared plus 298t minus 976 hundreds of entries per hour for 8 is less than or equal to t and 12 is greater than or less or equal to t. According to the model, how many entries had not yet been processed by midnight, which is also known as t equals 12? So now we're dealing with some new values. Up until now, we've only focused on the interval between t equals 0 and t equals 8. However, we now know that no more entries are being put in and the volunteers are going to start to sort through them. We have a function p of t, which is used to determine how many entries have been processed from the interval between t equals 8 and t equals 12. In order to determine how many entries have not yet been processed by midnight, we need to start by figuring out how many entries have been processed by midnight and what the total number of entries is. The data table given to us actually gives us the total number. At t equals 8 or 8 p.m., the number of entries is 2300. And since 8 p.m. is when the voting ended, we now uh, know that this is going to be our total number. But here comes the problem of finding out how many are going to be processed by 12 p.m. So let's make a fake graph and call this p of t. If I want to know how many entries have been processed by this function, I need to shade everything beneath the function from t equals 8 to t equals 12. Hopefully, this should ring a bell that we are going to need our good friend, the integral, for this problem. The integral is going to be used because it can tell us the area underneath this curve from t equals 8 to t equals 12. So let's solve it. The calculator is going to be useful for this, for this problem because it will instantly solve for the end result right away. However, in the case that you forget to bring a calculator or decide a calculator is too mainstream for you, you can always use the, uh, the reverse power rule to integrate and solve our definite integral. And our end result is always going to be that our integral is equal to 16. But that isn't exactly our answer. Our problem is asking us how many have yet to be processed, meaning that the 16 must be subtracted from the total number, which is 23. Uh, this simple subtraction gives us 700 entries, which ends up being our answer for this problem. Make sure to put in units, as always. Part D says, according to the model from Part C, at what time were the entries being processed most quickly? Justify your answer. The first part of this question tells us that we're going to need the model we used in Part C, or P of T. This question tells us that we need to find the time at which the entries were processed most quickly. Since we're dealing with rates, we will need to take the derivative using power rule and find the values of t when p prime of t equals 0, because that will give us our critical values. And we can do this by using quadratic formula. And be sure to use your calculator for this one because those values are nas to the t. These critical values are possible answers to our problem because they are possible absolute maxes. And the reason why we need to find absolute max in this problem is because we are looking for when the entries are processed most quickly and this is referring to where the highest point or absolute max is. We get that our critical values are approximately 9.2 and 10.8. All we have to do is plug these values back into P of T and choose the larger one that comes out, right? Wrong. When dealing with absolute maxes, keep in mind that we have to test our endpoints as well, which are in this case t equals 8 and t equals 12. We plug all our values back into the equation of p of t using our handy dandy calculator. This part can be solved without a calculator, but it is not recommended seeing that there's much more work to be added. And we get that at t equals 12, the entries are being processed the fastest, since p of t is referring to the rate. The final part of the question may seem a little tricky, but don't be deterred by it. The justification part means simply explaining how you solve the problem and what the answer is in a sentence. And hey, we kind of just did that when we solved this problem. A sample method of writing your answer in a sentence would be to say that the entries are being processed most quickly at time t equals 12 because, and you can insert your explanation here.